I greet you today in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. My name is Trisha Beckles and I welcome you to the Voice of Hope. In the midst of all that life holds and brings our way, we have to know, each and every one of us, we have to know that we have a hope. In the midst of all that we face, we can take pattern from what David said in Psalm chapter 42, verse 11 where he said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. David understood that as bad as things could get, he can still find something to praise God for. Voice of Hope every Wednesday, 6 a.m., right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network. It's not always easy, but trust God. He is more than worth it. I greet you today in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. My name is Trisha Beckles, and I welcome you to the Voice of Hope. Truly, our God is an awesome God. And I am so encouraged in this time and in this season to really take a look at what God is doing. It is easy to get frightened. It is easy to get frustrated. It is easy to give in to all manner of worry. But I'm here today to remind somebody that God is still in control. And even as we base this program on the book of Psalm chapter 42 verse 11, where David encouraged himself in the Lord when all things were going wrong, it seemed, and people actually wanted to stone him. David still said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? He said, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. My role here today is to encourage you that in spite of what is taking place, our God remains in control. It's that same God that loved you enough to be working in your life. It's that same God that has been looking out for you from before you were born and will continue to look out for you. And there is still nothing that is too hard for our God to do. So shall we pray today? Father, I thank you. I thank you, O oh God, that your word remains. I thank you for who you are. I thank you, God, that your thoughts toward us are for good and not for evil. I thank you, O oh God, that nothing that happens will ever take you by surprise. It's what you see, it's what you allow, and the final say remains yours. So God, even as we are bowed in your presence today, you already know our needs even before we ask. And God, we give you praise and we give you thanks because you are more than able to supply them all. I commit this time into your hands, Father. And I say, Lord, receive the glory. You know every need of every heart bowed in your presence this morning, today, tonight, wherever we are, and within the air shot of my voice. And Father, oh God, I pray by your spirit, you would minister to every heart. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would continue to search and you would continue to draw men to yourself in this time and in this season. I pray, O oh God, your hands of blessing and your hands of covering over this vehicle that is the Tobago Inspirational Network. I thank you, O oh God, that the cattle on a thousand hills remain yours. And because this is your vehicle, you are able, O oh God, to provide every single need of every single person or entity affiliated with the Tobago Inspirational Network because of your namesake. And Father, even now, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. God, it will never lose its power. And so, God, we declare the blood of Jesus to prevail over every plot, every plan, every trick, every scheme of the enemy, O oh God, against your people, against this network, against, O oh God, this very nation and this world, where sometimes the enemy may want to think that he is in control. But God, we thank you that even the very devil is subject unto you. And so, God, we look to you today and beyond for guidance, for strength, for everything that we will need as we go through this life for your honor and for your glory. We give you all the praise even now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 
we can thank God even now because God remains our eternal refuge our eternal source our eternal strength God has never failed and I want to assure somebody today that he will not fail he will not fail you he will not fail me he will not fail it is not in his DNA so I want to start today reminding somebody of what was said in John chapter 1 verse 1 where we were reminded that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God my role today is to point us to the importance of the word of God it will lay the foundation for all that we will discuss and I want to challenge us that even as we go through life that we come right back we focus who we are we focus what we say we focus the decisions we make on the word of God you see because it is pretty easy to get carried away with our own opinions I mean especially now we have social media and we have all the other things that take our attention away and because we are in this season I cannot emphasize enough how much we need to be very careful about who and what we listen to and how much of that we internalize because you know sometimes you're talking to your children for those who are parents and they say they, they, what I tell you come in one ear and goes out the next a lot of times we can do that with the Word of God when in truth and in fact we are supposed to take it and meditate on it and allow it to do what it has to do in us so that we may grow in the likeness of God and I want to take the time today to remind us that regardless of who says what, God's word remains and his purposes will always be fulfilled. And for somebody who may have a challenge with that, I just want to tell you today that that's actually a good thing because God is God alone. Regardless of your opinion, regardless of how schooled you think you may be and you're right to make such an opinion, God remains God. I was reading just this morning in a devotion where he said, it is easy to question God when you don't have to face him. And that stuck with me because in truth and in fact, so many of us spout about our opinions. And then you wonder, what does God see in the midst of it? I'm saying we have to be careful. So I want to take us to the book of Isaiah chapter 55, where he says in verses 10 to 11, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now I want to stick a pin here, because I want to emphasize in these two verses, there is no mention of the time frame that it will be accomplished. And because sometimes in our lives the time frame may seem longer than we bargained for, we tend to go and think it won't happen. But I'm saying, I'm reminding somebody today that if God says it, that it will happen. There's no other possibility. If God says it will happen, it will happen. And so somebody needs that as an encouragement. Somebody needs that as a reminder and somebody else needs that as a warning. Do not lean onto your own understanding. If God says it, it has to happen. And I'm saying all of that because we are in a season where as we draw closer to what we call the end of life as we know it, we've already been through COVID and all manner of stuff is happening around us. You know, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but even all over the world. The question then remains, how shall we live? And I'm asking us today, how much of what is going on around us 
affects the choices that we make. Or are we just in a place of just trying our best? I mean, it seems noble enough. I'm just trying my best to make it through every day. So whatever happens, happens. I'm just doing what I need to do. But again, I want to remind you about the word of God. And I'm asking us the question today, do we really judge good news by our circumstances? I'll refer you at this time to Luke. In Luke chapter 1, we know the account pretty well, but I'll still read through it really quick or just highlight some of it for us. Where in Luke chapter 1, Zacharias was told about the fact of his being blessed with a child. I'll encourage you to read it from chapter 1 verses 1 to 20. Where the angel came to Zacharias the priest and he said, you know, you're going to have a son. And this son shall be great. He shall draw the heart of the fathers to the children. He shall be a precursor to the king. I'm kind of just summarizing for you. I'm challenging you to go read it. But I want to point to a few points coming out of that particular part of the account in Luke chapter 1. Because sometimes, based on what Zacharias did, sometimes we can judge what's supposed to be good news by our own circumstances. So in Zacharias's case, yes, it seemed only natural because he looked at his old age. And here's the angel telling you, I'll give you this, you know, it'll happen. And he says, his response was, my wife is old, I am old. How can this happen? So immediately, it's almost like he cast it aside. It's something you prayed for for so long, but you've almost given up on praying. And so when the, the answer finally comes, you're not able to receive it because you've so given up that you're filled more with doubt. You so don't want to trust anymore. You so don't want to trust the word of God anymore. You know, sometimes we sing and we jump and yeah, Jesus will provide. But then you go home and you don't have what you think you should have. And so you doubt. And you settle sometimes for less than what God has for you. And so in Luke chapter 1, in Zacharias' case, we are told that fear fell upon him and he chose not to believe. And so he was actually struck dumb where he could not speak until the fulfillment of what was promised to him. And we have another e e example, sorry, in that particular chapter, where from verses 26, we are reminded about Mary, where that angel appeared to Mary and told her, even as a young teenage girl, that she was going to be the mother of the Savior. It seemed incredible. But Mary came to the point, even though she says, okay, how shall this be? Seeing that I never knew a man, I've never had sex. It seemed out of the ordinary, but Mary allowed herself to be used. And she says, be it unto me, according to the, the word of God. You see, because it's very easy to dismiss the word of God due to our circumstances. For many of us, we've been reading the Bible for so long. We've been reading it through and through. We know the words. We can recite it. We can do all kinds of things. But when it comes to applying it to our lives and to our circumstances, how much do we internalize it? How much do we claim it and say, if God said it, that it has to happen. And so I can thank God even now because I know it'll come to pass. Instead, sometimes we give over to doubt. We give over to despair. We give over to depression. I even remember the, the, the account of when the, the guy is sitting at the pool and the angel would normally come and stir the water. And by the time Jesus comes and he says, do you want to be healed? He starts making excuses. How many of us make excuses instead of standing on the word of God? I'm encouraging us today, do not do it. I've highlighted maybe three examples, but there are so many different examples in the Bible. And I'm, I'm sharing them so that you would know that even though I am highlighting it today, it is something that as humans, we can tend to fall into. And I'm challenging you today to remind you that there is better for you 
as you trust God, as you hold on to the word of God. I mean, if you think in the Bible, I mean, Abraham and Sarah did it. Saul did it because he feared the people. So when God said, kill everything, he decided to hold on to some of it so that he could offer a sacrifice unto God. And God said, you know, I prefer obedience than burnt offerings. I'm paraphrasing. And it's serving to ask us, even in this season, who or what have you let to discourage you from the word of God? When God wants to show himself mighty, God wants to show himself strong. And it takes me to the point of this entire message about prophecy. When we get a word of prophecy, what do we do with it? And that's one aspect of prophecy. But I want to focus especially today on the word of God. Because I, I go all the way back to when I got saved. A lot of it for me was about prophecy. I remember a year before that, I sat under a, a conference, a teaching in a church that I passed by from time to time. And he spoke about prophecy and how we interpret the book of Revelation and everything else like that. And it was interesting. And so by the time that I surrendered my life to Jesus a year later, and I got accepted in fellowship in the church that I now fellowship at, I remember in my welcome remarks saying to the church at that time, all those years ago, that we are out of signs. I mean, I was a babe in Christ. So it seemed like we were out of signs. We were seeing wars, we were seeing rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places. So it seemed like we were that close. And all these years later, one of the things I remember hearing from Hal Lindsey for the first time was that as these signs become more frequent, more intense, we get closer and closer to the end. It's like birth pangs in a woman that, are, that is about to give birth. So we look at what is going on around us. We see earthquakes happening multiple times a day around the world. There are websites that can track that for you. And we look now at what is going on with the wars around the world in, in Ukraine and in Israel. And it is very easy then to not only look at them for what they are, but sometimes in so doing, we tend to go away from how it relates to Bible prophecy. And I'm not going to stand here as any Bible prophecy expert. I'm just going to stand here saying that the word of God must be fulfilled. So looking on at what is going on in Israel and with Hamas and with the Israelites, a friend of mine, a colleague reached out to me to tell me about how bad it is and about apartheid and everything else and why the world is being fooled by the way the media is going and everything else like that. And at first I started to respond. And in the midst of it, the Holy Spirit reminded me. One phrase he said, look at what they did to Jesus. Yes, we can, I, I, I really don't care. And maybe that's harsh to say. I'm looking at what we, the world is going on about Israel and what the Israelites are doing to the Palestinians. And I'm looking at all the protests and everything else. And in the midst of it, the Holy Spirit asks, look at what they did to Jesus. Why are we expecting anything else from the same light lineage that killed Jesus? And I'm not taking sides here because what it has done for me is reminded me, and I'm taking the opportunity to remind you today of the grace of Almighty God. Because really and truly, these are the same Jews, the same lineage that put Jesus on the cross. But without it, we would not be saved. Without it, salvation would not be our portion. Should we be rejoicing? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it should help us to appreciate that God continues to work in the midst of what may seem like a dire situation. And as I'm looking around, I'm seeing people with all kinds of opinions all over the place. I am seeing 
the gospel being preached even in the midst of the war zone and both the Jews and every other person rejecting the knowledge of Jesus Christ and yet Jesus Christ came to save us all. We know John 3.16 by heart, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And here are these same people acting in ways, whether you find them to be barbaric, unmerciful, whatever. These are the people that have been chosen by God. And despite the fact that they were chosen by God, they put his son on the cross. But can I remind somebody that God allowed it that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But because of his divine plan, and that's why I'm encouraging you to get back into the word. Because the Bible tells us that God allowed it so that we could be grafted in. But they remain God's people. And so as we see all these things that are happening there and the, the different countries taking sides and everything else, I'm reminded of what we are told in Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10, where he says, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. At the end of the day, regardless of how they act toward their Savior, they are still God's chosen. And I'm saying it should give us a right perspective in the midst of what is taking place. I'm challenging us to look at everything that is going on around us. I've highlighted the war, but look at everything that is going on around us and ask yourself, how is this fitting in to the fulfillment of scriptural prophecy? Because the word of God must come to pass. And I'm smiling in a sense because I'm saying, don't they have to be as ridiculous as they, we, we, we may deem them to be in order for the nations of the earth to come against them? We know about, we've heard enough about the war of Armageddon. We've heard so many different things. But at the end of the day, they will look upon the very one whom they pierced. And I'm fascinated in a sense then by how God is moving in this season. I, I think for me, I've never imagined that I'd be here to see the Bible being fulfilled in the way that it is. And I'm saying to us as the body of Christ, I'm saying to us as anybody who has ever heard or read anything in the Bible, you have to know that the word of God must come to pass. Your opinion, my opinion does not matter. The word of God must come to pass. I'm saying we are reminded even in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 that it is by grace that we are saved. We, let me read just quickly from verse 1, I think. We are said, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We are seeing that. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace he is saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us, through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
we understand that of boasting is vain because we do not have a right to the greatness of God. It is his love, it is his mercy that is poured out upon us that allowed us to be drawn in in the first place because of his great love. So I'm saying to somebody today, it is very easy to judge and to have our own opinions. And what I've realized is that for every opinion, you always would find a crowd. Because despite our being called to be leaders, we tend to more be followers. So if somebody speaks something loud enough, whether it makes sense or not, there are likely to be people that go with it. But in the midst of it, the word of God will stand. I'm saying it's not about taking sides. I'm challenging us as the body of Christ. I'm challenging us as people who are looking after God. I'm challenging you wherever you are, whatever you're doing with God in this time of your life, to look to God. It is only God that is the author and finisher of your faith. It is only God who knows when and how whatever we are going through will end. He alone has the final say. He has showed you, O oh man, what is his plan. And I'm saying to us in the midst of it, yes, we've had the Bible since 16, whatever. Yes, we have all the people that are looking to discredit it because at times we choose not to understand it. But if we ask the Holy Spirit, he's able to teach us. He's able to guide us into all truth. So I'm saying to us in the midst of all that is taking place, God remains in control. And as we exist in this time and in this season, we've heard, we've seen a lot of increase in evangelism because in truth and in fact, the Lord can come, the Lord Jesus can come at any time. We have to be ready. We are seeing a lot of young people dying suddenly for all manner of reasons, accidents, shootings, whatever. We have to be ready to meet our maker. It is still a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yes, the kingdoms of the world may rise up in whatever form they may take, through the media, through whatever, but God remains in control and there is still nothing that can come against him. And so Father, we bless your name. We thank you, O oh God. We say, Lord, have your way in the earth. There's nothing that can stop you. And we as your people fix our gaze on you because you are more than able to take us through. So mighty God, we say, have your way. Receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay focused on God. He will see you through. Hallelujah. I greet you today in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. My name is Trisha Beckles, and I welcome you to the Voice of Hope. In the midst of all that life holds and brings our way, we have to know, each and every one of us, we have to know that we have a hope. In the midst of all that we face, we can take pattern from what David said in Psalm chapter 42, verse 11, where he said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. David understood that as bad as things could get, he can still find something to praise God for. Voice of Hope every Wednesday 6 a.m. right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network. It's not always easy, but trust God, he is more than worth it.